Okay, hello everybody, and uh, change of plans. I got my coat on, I got my pants on, like, yeah, I'm wearing shorts. Not, not trying to be weird or anything, but like, yeah, I got all geared up, ready to go outside, like back outside. And there's like, I started hearing snow shovels, so it turns out there's already people out there doing it. So, and I didn't recognize them, so they could be tenants, they could be paid, I don't know. But either way, I'm gonna just hold back. Hmm and just see what happens. Like, cause there's two of them out there now shoveling snow. And it's really not a whole lot, but yeah, I was just worried about like the older people in the complex. But I mean, there's a couple people on it, so that's cool. And I, I don't know. It was good, good news. There you go. <laughs> All right. Also, I had to go back and delete more footage. I got to offload some stuff. Deleted some of these little, like, mini clips. That was, like, six minutes, and I think one was five minutes. Basically talking about Gaza and Israel. And, like, I want to apologize for that. Like, I did not... I learned more about what was going on. I mean, because we really... It's all based... Our understandings are based on what we know. Like, what we hear about it, what we know about it, what we read. What we think we know, too. Because, like, for instance, one particular detail is, like, a hospital got blown up. And I don't, I, at first I thought it was Israel. And I was like, oh my gosh, how could they do that? They're just destroying these people. But then it turns out it was actually Hamas and like they were trying to make it look like Israel so the world would do exactly that. But now we live in a day, of, an age of information where we've got satellites taking pictures of things. We can see the source of every rocket, every, like, I mean, we're, we've got close eyes on the whole situation. And... And besides that, we've also got receipts, we've got digital footprints, we've got people talking, we've got every possible, like, I mean, you can't get away with stuff like that anymore. And, like, granted, people are people, and Hamas, not justifying what they're doing, it's pure evil, but they're pushed to that level of evil through a, f a number of factors, too. It's not just, you can't just generalize and say, oh, point your finger, it's this thing. No, it's, uh, <coughs> it's a combination of religion, which Christians are just as guilty if not more so, of doing some pretty messed up things in the name of religion. Um, and then it's also communication, understanding. Like, depending on your perspective, the whole situation looks really bad for one side or the other. And there are two distinct sides. There's the, the, Arabic, or the Arab side, the Muslim side, and the Judean side. It's like split religiously, it's split polit geopolitically. <coughs> Well, that's probably not the best word for it, but basically, you know, Israel used to live there. Or the Israelites or the Judean people, you know, this group of people used to live there once upon a time. But, <coughs> sorry. And then, oh, whoops, changed management. Yep, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But, um, I don't know. And up, up until like 300 years ago, Amer the United States of America didn't exist. This used to be a land of Native Americans, so trust me when I say I'm well familiar of some bad changes in management. Like, or maybe not necessarily bad, but just brutally violent and gory and deadly. Yeah, like, we killed most of the, the people, the locals that lived here. Not me, I mean, not my grandpa, not my great-grandma, you know, I know direct descendants, but, you know, f family of family was a part of that. Probably a pretty big part, actually, because I can trace my lineage back to, like, some pretty pretty smart scientists, you know, engineers for NASA, the railroads, uh, military, stuff like that. I, myself, was slotted for military intelligence. Never served, though. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I have never served, and I do not want any of that stolen valor. Like, sometimes I might act militaristic, but no. I have a lot of respect for the people that did serve. My A lot of people in my family did. My dad, my grandpa... Um, a lot of my uncles, like, I respect the heck out of them. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> I feel like I gotta explain that every time I even talk remotely, like I have any idea of being military, but I don't even know where we got off on that tangent. Okay, so yeah, Israel. Today I saw probably the best thing. It was from one of the Israeli uh, military people, and it just made the most sense, because after hearing of the horrors, of like the specific horrors of what Hamas did to the, the hostages, how many people died of like just all out, just brutal, yeah, torture, and it was messed up. And it was on like a Judean holy day, I think. They were like, they had a meal prepared for a lot of the situation. So when you start hearing stuff like that, then it's like just the brutality of it. Granted, they're people too. 
Now, I'm not justifying what they're doing, but they're pushed to a point where they think that this is okay, that this is acceptable in war. And it is a jihad holy war over there. They're claiming different rights to an area. Can we put them on this? Yeah, one pickle, two pickle, C pickle, four. Nice. Yes, I like this. We need many sea pickles. I need to see if we can grow them, harvest them. I mean, we could harvest them from surrounding areas. Like, I could go out there and take all the light out there <laughs> and put it right on my... No, that's selfish. We should leave the place better than we found it. For the most part. I know I say that having dug out a gigantic mining shaft, you know, made this big, tall glass thing. I've also planted a bunch of trees, added vegetation. You know, not unlike some of the projects that I want to try to enact in the real world. So yes, we've got Gaza and Israel and Palestine and you know, all these people angry, killing each other, blowing each other up, destroying each other's homes. Like, unfortunately, they are using... Oh, and this is what this military person was saying. It was like, you know, Hamas is using a bunch of human shields. Like, that's why we're trying to have everybody evacuate, because they're basically going to just destroy northern Gaza. Like, just destroy it all. And try to kill out any Hamas that are still there, which is kind of, I already see a flaw in that because I feel like a lot of Hamas would just evacuate with the people. All right, let's temporarily move south, you know, and then we'll, we'll be right back, like, you know, BRB. But I don't know. That's why I keep thinking that we need to address the root issues of this whole situation. <coughs> How to provide better living situations for all these people, thriving economies, comfort, so, because nobody is, like, saying they can't practice their religion. It's not that. The religion is only an unfortunate side effect of drawing lines to see who the who your enemy is. Or who, you know, that's the sad, unfortunate part of it. And it's also getting to the point where a lot of times, I've seen people that, on both sides that look the same as the other person. Like, it's almost like, I don't know, England fighting the U.S. It was white on white. And even our civil war. We killed our brothers and cousins. Like, brutally slaughtered our, each other. I mean, it wasn't as bad as what Hamas did, like the level of psychological terror that inflicted on that, and like, you know, and God forbid there is an afterlife, because there's no justifying that, what they did. Like, I, I've read a bunch of the Quran, like, you know, it, I don't think it says anywhere in there to do any of that nonsense, so, but it's desperation. They were, they were pushed to this level of desperation because of certain factors. Now, if we address those factors one by one, you know, don't try to bite off more than you can chew, what are we even doing? We have all the, we need, we need to make a farm. That's what we need to do. We're going to develop a farm in Oasis. And yeah, I'm leaving this here, this little structure for the circumcenter of a triangle, which is right here, ironically. It, it is on the midpoint. <coughs> but we can prove that it is equidistant from each of the points. Now, if you make, the, if you adjust the triangle, anyways, look back to that one. Ouch. <laughs> and yes, I'm still lingering onto a cold. We need to make a farm. Yeah, I've been kind of lazy with the dirt everywhere, all the trees that we just grew. It looks like you cannot grow through that. So there's a block above it, but there's a solid block next to it, solid block above and next to it. I don't know, either way that sapling's not going. And I don't even know what all we want to make for a farm. Let's take the beetroot seeds. Pumpkin, yeah, we could start it. Let's just take normal dirt. We don't need anything fancy. I like the grass, because even though this shovel is a, uh, it has silk touch, so, yeah, but, and also we can make, oh, I should fix the floor eventually instead of having to keep hopping over it, but what we could do, is make floating sugar, oh, Maybe right here? I don't know. Yeah, let's do that. So, in order to do this, just gotta put a bunch of sand out here. Or dirt, sorry. <laughs> sand would be falling. Like, you could start plopping them, the first few, but they would fall to the sea floor. Alright, and how far out do we want to go? That looks pretty cool. 
Imagine if that was just like a gigantic castle over there. This is good enough. And basically you need to have one space between them. And I usually break the end ones. Oh, we could do it even faster this way. There we go. Oops. And this is for sugar cane. Oh, if I can walk a straight line backwards. Okay. There we go, almost one whole row. And so just having those closer to where we're usually at is going to make it to where that they'll grow faster rather than over there. Which, like I said, they'll still grow. And especially since we keep kind of wandering over there. But slowly. Okay, so now... I mean, I'm not against just continuing to add on to this. Although, at some point, we're going to need... Start using like buckets and stuff. Why is that there? There. Actually, this one might turn back into normal dirt, but yeah, we can keep hugging like the area where there's already water. But eventually, I'd like to like maybe underground make a gigantic farm. Although not too far, because then it could continue to grow. Oh, like under there. But. Continue to do that. Let's get some more dirt, though. Let's make this whole massive thing. Oh. Oh, and the exciting development of having, um, actually, let's do one of those. Couple. Of having the ink sacks and the feathers, now that we have chickens, and leather, and the lectern, is we can start writing, bo and logging in with the computer. See, all of this stuff is kind of leading up to some really awesome development. I can start typing up notes and memos, and putting them in books, and then, like, putting them in the Minecraft world. So, although I did notice that there is a potential that the book can break so I almost feel like I need to make copies of all the books keep, just like I do with the maps in case I die like say I fall into lava and I lose the map that I'm carrying you know as well as all my tools I, I am ready to lose all of this not happily but if it happens it happens and so I have enchanting areas I'm gonna make an enchanting setup here at this base as well just so it's like completely self-sufficient and so yeah, so I don't have to keep running all the way back to Andarius, or like, Andarius proper. This could be new Andarius, and that could be old Andarius. I don't know. Either way, it's a lot of fun. all the way up. I was just, I saw the coral and I kind of just stopped. And that'll break those two eventually. I think. Maybe. I don't know. They, d they have been changing some things too. Uh, I noticed uh, one of the new updates. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I guess that's the same when chunks load in and sometimes it does spawn like improperly and then crops and I don't know about sugar anyways um oh jeez hold on <coughs> uh, but the other new update was uh liquids that come out of buckets 
you can't just pick them up instantly. So I feel like that's going to cause some issues. Like if people accidentally misplace a lava bucket and it starts running amok and like overflowing, then you're going to have to deal with a certain la level of overflow. Like you just, it's just a fact now. So, I mean, same with water, but water is not nearly as bad, not nearly as damaging. Like lava, it'll actually like destroy things, and like it'll, it's gone, it disappears. Whereas with water, like it's really annoying when you're trying to make a farm or even something like this. But like, no, more so like the pumpkin farms. Some of the other videos, I've had some water run amok, and like it'll rip up all of the pumpkin and melon plants. So you just have to go gather them and plant them again. That's it. It's a minor annoyance versus lava where it's just destroyed. Also. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm talking a lot. Oh yeah, so Oasis could be the playlist of like setting setting this all up, and then we could even do like maybe even subset, just making this like the education one of the education projects. So I've already done computer science st uh, talking like Borderlands Three. That was my first ever videos that I made. And it was just me blowing up a bunch of stuff and killing people, and then the teaching computer science. So huzzah! <laughs> so now doing this, kind of teaching Minecraft too. I mean, honestly though, go check out Waddles. If you really want to learn about Minecraft, like the mechanics and stuff, he, yeah, he's probably the best YouTuber I know. YouTuber I know for Minecraft, but a lot of people do it. There's plenty out there. There's a sea of entertainment. Ah. I have just a tiny drift on this one too now. But at least it's not as bad as the other one. I can't believe I was playing through it. Like, I suffered through it, and I was just like, okay, this is fine. I guess it has to be, yep, and see it reverted because it was too far away from the water. Anyways, that's beetroot. I don't have beetroot. Okay. Nice. And see, I could force it. There. Just like this one. See how it's not saturated? So as soon as I harvest it, there's a chance that it'll go back to normal and I'd have to plow it again. So I really need to get a bucket and let's do it. Let's just make this a little uh, hydroponics farm. Oh, that's a thing. Well, let's get some of the sandstone. This could be bad too. Maybe that's why I stopped doing it. Oh, well, that's fine. I mean, it'll just take a little bit to shore up the walls. So we have a kind of moat thing going on around like our base proper. <coughs> so what I could do is go in there. do that just build it there we go it takes a little bit of these that way I can continue to build downward and just be mindful that this is where I need to stop. So let's go get fresh air. Oh. Yep, you too.
There we go. And huzzah. It's good for now. Oh, we should probably just. Ooh. Still saw some here. Now we can completely gut it out and not worry about like running into that as much. It looks like I need to do right there. Oh. Already, I can tell this isn't going to make a great aquaponics farm. Unless we go, like, out that way. <coughs> uh, we need to s make sure we can still get up, which... There. I'm going to be wasting some grass here anyway. Hmm. Oh, wait. <laughs> I have natural ladders right here. So I could just go up that way. Alright. Oh, and if we get... Clippers. Oh, and a bucket. That's what the other thing was. I was like, I don't want to use the rest of this iron. Okay. Until we could go get more, but... Yeah, surprisingly, there wasn't a lot of iron going through there. Just a ton of diamonds and redstone and lapis. Oh. That's how you get them. Then once you place them, maybe that's when they start going. I don't know, we'll see. We'll get more than six though. I think you gotta cut them from the bottom up to get the most. So otherwise they just break if you cut the one above it. I feel like that's what was just happening. Yeah, already we have a bunch more. So. Yeah, 
Yeah, 24. Still don't know what I'm going to put in here. Like, it's kind of far away for anything really useful. I mean, it was more just a show that I could do it. Okay. So this will be an experiment to see if they'll start. I, I think that's actually what's going to happen. This is my hypothesis is if you place one then it'll start growing up and down but not left and right. I think they might have just changed that. In fact we could even go ahead and maybe I should have done some more some lines up and down. I know these keep growing back so Yeah, let's do an up and down line on two sides. Oops. I guess it doesn't matter here because they're not free hanging, so it's not dependent on the one on above it. They're all equally. They could be placed on the wood is what I'm trying to get out that. that is. So for this one, let's do a vertical line. This side. Ah, oh, I still need to finish it. Right. But also I have spruce trees now, so that's that's better for getting more fire more wood quickly. I mean not just firewood but like wood for anything, but like, even since we've been here, has there been any growth? Because when we started, yep, right there, those two. Did I pick that? See, that looks like unchanged. I feel like those two are new, but I could have placed them. And I wonder if bone meal would affect it. Well, anyways. Let's go ahead and get some more, uh, some more jungle wood. Because I do want to finish that big tree. Oh. Looks like that's the end of this episode. Alright, alarm. Or while getting close to it, the two minute warning. So we'll cut this tree down. And then. But yeah, so maybe I'll log in with the computer and start writing a bunch of books. Oh, shoot. Um, there. But yeah, just writing down the concepts and then, like, I don't know. I have to make, like, a publicly available, downloadable map. I know Waddles does that periodically. Like, he makes a a copy of his map available but he doesn't let people into his world and I don't think I will either because that's like let's just ask him for trouble like if some random person wanted to spam you or you know do something or go and explore like everything and you I mean basically like it's fun the idea of playing with other people is fine but like at the same time you gotta be kinda careful like you don't wanna just uh, let anyone in for now I mean but that's why you inspire people to build their own stuff and do their own thing and they then they don't have to worry about stepping on toes so anyways ta-ta for now i'll see you in the next one